Hi and welcome back to the Garner Girls YouTube channel where we talk all about women's health care. In today's video we're going to be talking about urea plasma and mycoplasma. Teeny teeny tiny bacteria that can colonize up the vaginal canal and the urethra. These are typically transmitted through direct contact and sexual contact. Although they're transmitted through sexual contact, they're not considered or classified under the normal STD umbrella, such as a chlamydia, gonorrhea, or herpes infection. These infections could cause common symptoms such as vaginal burning, burning with urination, in watery vaginal discharge. Sometimes there's a vaginal odor like a fishy odor. We can have penile discharge in men, or we can be completely asymptomatic. A lot of times women have more symptoms than men, and men can typically be asymptomatic carriers and not even know that they have it. Reaplasma not only causes typical vaginal infections, it can also cause cervicitis or a cervical infection and endometritis, which is an endometrial infection. It also causes a lot of complications with pregnancy and infertility. So a lot of women who have been struggling with infertility, we've been finding that they're positive for these infections. It can also cause complications with early pregnancy loss, such as a miscarriage, late-term pregnancy loss, such as an inner uterine fetal demise, which is extremely devastating, premature rupture of membranes or PROM, we can have infections of the amniotic fluid, and in late-term pregnancy, we can also see transmission between mom and baby. Infants can have respiratory infections and respiratory problems. Another thing that's interesting with these infections is they can cause abnormal pap smears with the absence of HPV. So HPV is a typical virus that can live on the cervix and it can cause abnormal pap smear, cervical cell changes, and it can lead to cervical cancer. I'll talk about that in more detail in a future video, but sometimes we have abnormal cells on a pap smear without the presence of HPV. It leads due to things like inflammation and infections. So we've been seeing a lot of urea plasma and mycoplasma infections causing abnormal pap smears. So if you feel like you fall into this category where you've had a couple abnormal pap smears but you've never had HPV, it may be helpful to talk to your healthcare provider about getting tested for urea plasma. Testing for these infections is really easy and relatively painless. It's just a vaginal or cervical swab, just like we would do a regular STD culture, we would test for yeast or bacteria, or we would do a pap smear. You can test through the urine, however, the results of the urine are just not accurate and we see a lot of false negatives. So therefore, typically go off the vaginal cultures. Treatment is really simple, it's with an antibiotic. However, sometimes these infections can be really resistant and really hard to treat and can require a couple rounds of antibiotics. First line treatment would be with an antibiotic like doxycycline or azithromycin. And if it's more of a resistant or reoccurring infection, we may go with something like Levaquin or Cipro, which is in the fluoroquinolone family. What we typically do in our clinic if you've been diagnosed is we have you complete treatment with an antibiotic and then we bring you back in the office four weeks later for a reculture or a test of cure. This is to see if you still have the infection. If you're still positive, we would go on to a second round of antibiotics and in that case, we would recommend that your partner get treated as well. Especially if you're trying for pregnancy, struggling with infertility, or you've had some of the pregnancy and see complications with urea plasma and mycoplasma. These are increasingly common infections, so if you feel like you're suffering from reoccurring vaginal symptoms such as burning or urinary burning, you're having this thin, watery discharge with an odor, definitely talk to your healthcare provider and see if you can get treated. So we see a lot of patients in the clinic coming in thinking they have a yeast infection or a BV infection or a UTI and, and their cultures keep coming back negative. In that case, we would then do a urea plasma or mycoplasma culture to see if that's something that they have. So if you feel like you're struggling from these symptoms or you're having this thin watery discharge, vaginal burning or pain with intercourse, talk to your healthcare provider and see if you can get tested to see if you have a plasma infection. As always, if you found this content helpful, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos.